This is the Job Stories Podcast, how people find work that matters. Being on the uh, Job Stories Podcast, um, we appreciate you coming on today. If you don't mind to get us started, what what is your job now? What are you, what are you currently working on and for who? Uh, hey, Mason. So, uh, it's great to be here, first off. But um, yeah, so I am the CEO and co-founder of LabelCoin. Uh, where we're building the Robin Hood for music to stamp out artistic poverty. Cool. Cool. So tell me a little bit about kind of what that looks like for you. Um, as a CEO and founder, I kind of want to get into it a little bit. What's your kind of day-to-day looking like building a new business? Because I, I, I'm i leading uh, leading you a little bit. Our audience is a little twofold. We do recruiting, right? We do tech recruiting. but we So we have a lot of candidate base, but we also have a, a lot of entrepreneurs that come on. So I want to kind of touch both sides. So talk a little bit about what entrepreneurship has been like for you and what you're doing building LabelCoin. Yeah, totally. Well, I think with, with any... Startup, a new company, it always kind of goes in sections, like what you're working on and kind of focus building out. And so, you know, we're about a year in right now. Uh, and so, you know, initially that was just me and my co founder working on essentially, do we have an, an idea that works in that product design and, and testing, doing the, the opportunity analysis? And then once we decided, hey, this actually does make a lot of sense, we should go down this route. Um, then a lot of it transitioned into um, kind of in parallel partnership development, you know, finding the people that we want to work with, that we need to work with to execute our idea and to start building out the team, but also to actually flesh out from take from idea. Okay. Here's what we plan to do. And then how do we actually make that happen? You know? And so that went into even as, as detailed as, you know, flow charts for the engineers to know, okay, when you click here, <laughs> here are yeah. the three things that can happen or, you know, so, so, so sometimes I, I go into that, that space because, you know, I would love to uh, hire even more people right now and look forward to hiring more very, very soon. But because right now I, I do, I wear a lot of hats, a lot of hats. So. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell me how this came about for you. Like, how did the entrepreneurship path come? And obviously, you've got some music in your background. So, how did how did it kind of come about? Uh, well, I mean, my first company was when I was twelve. Uh, my brother and I <laughs> started a, a vending machine company. Cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, so it's, it, that was just uh, my you know my dad had hired us from the time we were I was like ten to clean his office. He's like, well, I can teach our kids how to do this and pay them. He's a chiropractor and has a medical office, and so. We started saving from that point on. And then he's like, had a, a patient who said, Hey, yeah, um, I'm, I'm selling some vending machine accounts. If you know, if you've known anybody. And so my dad's like, Hey, guys, do you want to start a business? So my brother and I did. And uh, at That's first they had awesome. to drive us to the locations. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, but it just, it just never stopped from that point on, really. Um, I've, I've had very few actual jobs with um, where I'm getting paid by somebody else. Yeah. And I'm 38 now, so it's uh, it's been that journey. So, but on the music side, specifically with label coin, um, you know, I became a musician right out of college. So I had already started working on my first album in Nashville, and and then started playing small house show venue stuff 2005, and uh, kept doing that. So I met my wife in 2010, and it didn't stop. Then it accelerated because on our honeymoon, she told me she wanted to quit her job and join me in music full time. Nice. And I said, okay, that's awesome. And we need a new business plan. <laughs> and so, uh, and so we, we, you know, pivoted a bit within that and found our niche in college market, especially playing a lot of universities and colleges. And, and so that evolved, um, you know, by 2016, uh, we, uh, had our second child and we chose to get off the road and help other people that were way more talented do what we did. And so we started a, a booking agency, um, and, and, We've worked with since then, I think 75, 80 different artists uh, and speakers and helping book them around and doing artist development as well. And so that's what I was doing up until COVID. Um, and we still have that agency. It's still operating, uh, but my team runs it mostly. But during COVID, that's when I met my co-founder, uh, Chad Peterson, who was a Wall Street guy. So he was a, an investment banker, uh, a VC investor. And so he, um, so he, ended up moving to Nashville. Um, and he was previously back in New York and, and back in the Wall Street world when 2008 hit, which for the people in the finance world, you know, that that was the, the black market. Everybody lost their jobs and the, the markets crashed. And uh, it was devastating for a lot of people and, and Chad included. And so he started a nonprofit 
to help uh, his friends and the people that he knew basically pull their lives back together called Wall Street Exodus. And, um, and so fast forward to Nashville, he's here during COVID and, and in Music City. And he just happens to, you know, when he, when he sees what's happening with COVID, how all the tours are getting canceled, musicians are losing their jobs. He's like, man, this looks a whole lot like Wall Street 2008. <laughs> and how do I, uh, how can I help? And so he's, he's like, well, I don't know a whole lot about music, but I, I can start a nonprofit. And, uh, and so he did that, got a giant grant, started helping musicians. And, and that's how we got connected. If someone said, hey, you should talk with Mark and he might be able to help you with you know, helping the musicians and different things. And so, so we met and he had, uh, um, you know, and so, uh, you know, so much, so many opportunities happen when we are just saying yes to the ones in front of us and, <laughs> and serving people well. And then, and then it just kind of, you know, evolves. And, um, and so he shared this idea he had with me of securitizing um, music. Like, hey, what would happen for these artists long term if we could look at their future income put some kind of value on it and bring it forward now and let people invest in it. And uh, I'm like, okay, that's fascinating. Um, I feel like there's more there. Like, I feel like, like um, what would happen if we take this into the blockchain world? Like, cause I've been getting pretty deep into the crypto space at that point. And, and then also focus on song specifically. So we maximize the freedom of artists and what they're, uh, you know, how much they're giving up and, and letting them stay in control of their futures, but still creating this amazing, powerful mechanism where they can actually earn living wages way earlier in their career than they normally would. And and so that's how LabelCoin was was born. Yeah, that oh, so much of that's amazing. But the first thing that's coming to mind is, I mean, you you found um, a, a really cool. It sounds like a solution for maybe some problems that you had early on as a musician. Is that ringing true? I mean, do you feel like you're you're helping the younger you maybe with label coin? Do you, do you know what I'm getting at? <laughs> oh, oh, completely. Yeah, completely. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And did that come from just, I think you mentioned just saying yes, right? Is that, because I'm, I'm seeing some advice for maybe entrepreneurs out there or even candidates, like just kind of going for it, right? And you stumble into doing some really impactful stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It comes from saying yes, and and the funny thing is, it also sometimes comes from saying no. Mm, yeah, <laughs> um, because like I, I wanted to to help artists from early on, and when I got married, and that was part of my business plan um, failed model as an artist was that I was always helping out other people, mm. and I was not focusing on my own stuff. Yeah, uh, and so I'd always put my my mind on the back burner while other people can can go forward and. And Heather, my wife, is like, um, you know, I love that your heart is to help all these other people, but you need to figure out yourself first <laughs> and your yeah. stuff. <laughs> and so, um, so you know, I had to say say no to a lot of a lot of the uh, you know ways that I knew I could help other people or, or do things or just input. And it's like, hey, I got to figure out my things. I got to get good at what I'm doing. And then, um, and that was what allowed us to actually build our career and get it to where we were in a position to where we, we learned a ton and we could actually then apply it. And so, so then when 2016 came around, it's like, Hey, now is the time <laughs> to, to really put our heart and soul into to helping other artists succeed. That's, that's when that started. So, um, but yeah, it, it did lead it. And so you know, I've always seen those problems and I, I want to avoid that. Like, you know, for example, right now, the way that artists tend to get by is by what we've coined fan handling, mm. uh, you know, running Kickstarters or, or Patreons uh-huh. or, you know, begging people for money, like, please fund my next album and sure. help me get from point A to point B. And, you know, I, I remember vividly spending an entire summer um, making 60 ceramic handmade mugs and, uh, you know, <laughs> for, for Kickstarter or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Award. Kickstarter, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, totally. You yeah. know, I probably made like three seventy five an hour <laughs> for, for that. And, <laughs> Uh, and I'm so grateful for all those people. And yet, like, that's a terrible business model. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, and I don't want, you know, artists need to be able to do what they're meant to do. Mm-hmm. And and it's kind of silly that uh, that it can take people 10 years into their career before they're making a living wage they can raise a family on. And how many people can actually stick it out to get that far and, and make it that way. So, um, so yeah, it is. It, you see the problems. You see where things can get solved. And then you're like, hey, what? When you, when you come up with that solution, then, I mean, that's, that's what's best. You, you can see what's needed because you experienced it and you just get to bring it to, to the people who need it. Yeah. And I think your market is just, again, it's because it's been your world, but like music is, I mean, my wife's full-time music. I mean, it's, it's, gnarly. Oh. it's gnarly. Like you just have to 
figure out ways to make money. And again, a lot of the business models out there for that just probably aren't real great. So you've really, you're really solving a problem for a community that for sure needs it. And I think that's really cool. Um, and can you explain a little bit more just high level for our blockchain crowd? So tell me, tell me, dive a little bit more into how <laughs> label coins utilizing that to help musicians. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I won't go, go super deep yeah, into yeah, all yeah, the high level. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, this yeah, time, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Um, but essentially, what we're, we're using smart contracts and blockchain okay. to, as like the the framework that everything runs on. But what we're doing is we're building a song exchange, so an app where you don't have to know how to use NFTs or sell on OpenSea or anything like that. Um, you know, that the artist uh, is able to sell their digital streaming royalties, and we help them value that based upon a whole lot of. Um, you know, metrics and an algorithm. Um, and then they choose their value The the fan is going to see, uh, on those digital streaming royalties, they're going to, they're going to be able to see, okay, what's our value. What is the, how much data went into this value as like a confidence meter. Um, what is the artist selling it for? And then they're going to see one other really important metric and that's how many spins or like how many listens would it take for me to get, you know, X return on my investment. So if I want to get a 10% APR, you know, with this, uh, this song would have to get a hundred thousand spins a year or 200,000 or whatever. And so it makes, so it makes a, a kind of an educated guess on that point. But what we're doing is we're allowing the artists to essentially bring like 10 years of their future income forward to now. So when people download the label coin app, they'll be able to, um, to invest in songs, um, which that artist and earns 98% of that right up front. And then, um, they're able to start earning those royalties and also be able to trade those songs again in the app. So if the song becomes more popular, they can of course, you know, sell off those, their, their notes, their song shares. Um, and then we have like features such as like a song mutual fund with curated collections where people can invest and in, put their 10 bucks into one song or put it into a hundred songs. Cool. And that's, you know, great for the other people in the music industry or, or just people that are huge fans or music bloggers that are passionate, but have not earned money either. You know, it's not just gnarly for the musicians who are in this. It's, it's the other people that, are, that treat music as a passion project. And like, how can we help them be able to make a living off of supporting the music industry and, and acknowledging their roles. And so like, there's, there's pieces like that. So we, we just imagine a world basically where you're at a show like, Hey, if you love that song, you own part of it. Yeah. (laughs) And and right there, Hey, put in 10 bucks, put in 20 bucks. And, and that's just like changes everything for the artist, but also gives fans a really cool new way to engage and create totally really a new asset class. Totally. That is so cool. I asked on behalf of that because I selfishly am looking, I'm thinking in terms of a cool clip later because I, I, I'd like for my music friends to see this. So that was kind of selfish for me. To, back to you. Um, I, you started on your kind of like entrepreneurship journey at 12 years old. Um, <laughs> so you're, um, we talk a lot about mentorship or maybe in another case like inspiration. Have you had a mentor? kind of is it maybe it was your dad or I I don't know have you had who's kind of helped you along the way kind of shape who you are today at 38 I've had so many uh really I I will often say that I'm the sum of you know a hundred people that have poured into my life and uh, um and those aren't all voluntary mentors sometimes there are people that I listen to you or people that I just I just ask questions I ask a lot of questions when I'm with people and I love learning yeah, but I do stick it out. Like whenever I, I'm like, hey, I'm stuck in this spot, um, you know, or I don't know how to do something, or I realize I'm really poorly qualified in this area. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, who who around me is good at this, <laughs> and who can I ask questions about? And it's amazing, like how many people like, if you're a hungry learner, there there are tons of people that would want to share and want to help you um, because they, they've been through it and they and they love to help you get to that next level. So um, I couldn't say just one person in different seasons of life. It's been a a lot of different folks, Um, but I'm always seeking out new ones and it never stops. But one book that I would say that that was a a, a long-term, you know, (laughs) um, I guess long distance mentor I've never met is Michael Hyatt, who wrote a book called Free to Focus. And that's one book that, I got two chapters into it and I bought a copy for my entire team and we went through together for six weeks. And then I took a lot of our artists through it as well. And I I still stand by the statement that I would have gladly paid $5,000 to go back to the start of my career as an artist and read that book first. Wow. (laughs) And so, uh, yeah, there's lots of, 
lots of people learn from. Yeah. So you touched on it. Um, you're very curious. You like to ask questions and learn. Is that something that you're instilling as you're growing your teams at LabelCoin? I'm I'm asking. I think this is on behalf of candidates now. Like I I mm. like get an insight of what a founder at a cool tech startup in music kind of what they're thinking whenever they're building out their teams, right? It seems like you're, you'd like to have folks that are eager to learn, uh, ask a lot of questions, things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't, I, I wouldn't say I necessarily look for imprints of myself yeah. um, in that sense necessarily. Um, I love that, that attribute. I mean, we all, we all tend to like, like people like ourselves, I guess, but <laughs> it's, yeah. it's great to have people that are different in that, that challenge you differently to you. Uh, but the things that we look for are, um, you know, I definitely open, honest communication is a big part of that, which is some of that curiosity. Like we want to have that open dialogue and I want to know, um, you know, and it goes back to that book a little bit. I want to find people that and put them in roles where they're both passionate and they're proficient. Um, and that's what I want most of their work to be. You know, of course, startups, sometimes we have to pull different directions and not every day is full of all the stuff that we love, but, um, but by and large, like I, that's where I, I want people like, I want to hire people that, Hey, this isn't just a check in, check out for you. Like, yes, it's, this is not your top priority. You have a life outside of work and that's more important <laughs> than, than your work life. But when you're here, I want you to love it. And I want you to, you know, be like, this is what I was made to do. And so trying to find those people that are both, you know, love it and are, are great at it. But then, yeah, we, we want to find people that are, um, that take initiative and that's part of that curiosity. Uh, you know, I love people that, um, that aren't just waiting to be told what to do all the time, but, um, can see, Hey, there's a problem here and I want to solve it. Like, like how could it, and are able to think from other people's perspectives. And so that's one of the, I mean, that culturally we want people that are looking out for the interests of others. And so when you, if you're that type of person, you, you're looking and you're trying to understand from someone else's perspective. And so we want people that can look at it and understand the business. We want to share that. We share it very openly. We're very open with our numbers, with our goals, with those things like that, because we want people to understand, okay, so here's where the business is. Here's where we're trying to get it to go. Um, you know, and then that way they can make better decisions as employees, like that help us towards that and think, okay, well, what if we did this or, or, okay, what you asked me to do actually probably isn't the best way. What if we did it this way? It allows us to be actually grow more as a team. Yeah, that's, I love those thoughts. And um, we were talking to, there's a founder who's on the podcast here in Nashville named Derek Brown. He has a company called Bunches, but he was talking about um, in, in the Web3 and blockchain space too, how fast it's changing and having folks that are pretty adaptable as well, especially on the tech side. Is that something you found true for y'all as well? Oh, it definitely is. Um, <laughs> all the time. Um, and I think that that's probably to your point on, on learning and growing as well, because I don't necessarily hire somebody based upon, are they that yeah up on, on all the, the latest tech necessarily, but are they want, wanting to learn and are they looking forward to what that next thing is? And more about the foundations, right? Like, like graphic, like right now we're trying to find more graphics people. Um, and on, on multiple levels, there's, you know, there's UI UX, there's this like, you know, your, your branding, social media stuff in general. And, a lot of different elements that need to get done graphically. And so, um, you know, I, I want people that, that look, that can, are thinking about what's that trend, you know, right. Okay. That font is very 2021. So let's think about what 2023 is going to be and what's happening specifically in the music and the tech space. What are we seeing? And then, so how do we look into that, that future? You know, it's like, um, there's a producer that I love that a lot of my artists have worked with named John Johnson. And one of the things that he likes to do is he'll bring in people and ask them, who's your favorite artist? you know, that you're looking for. He's like, okay, great. Now let's try to make their next album, not their last album, not the one that you've already heard, but try to think about, you know, who would this artist be on that next album and try to create that. And so like looking at those, those forward thinking people that, Hey, you know, um, I want to be on the cutting edge. I want to stay up. I, and, and the reason that they're doing that is because they genuinely love it. Like they love design. They love, they love graphic design. They love marketing. They love branding. And so they're passionate and trying to find out what's coming up next. So, and, and that's true about every position, I think. Yeah, that's great. Great, great insight. No, I appreciate it, Mark. I think we're kind of running up on time. So if it's okay, um, I'd like to give you a chance to, if there's an, a way folks can reach out to you to maybe ask more about LabelCoin or yourself or how, how can they do that if anybody hears this and wants to touch base with you? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, LinkedIn's a great spot. Uh, make sure you send me a message. Um, so I, I know that you're a person that found me here or what you want to talk about. Um, because I, I don't always, if I, if I haven't met you before and I don't get a message, I, I probably won't accept it. Um, and I would love to love to get to know these people and love to get to know you. And, and just, so just let me know what's up. And LinkedIn's great. But you can also follow us at LabelCoin all over different places. So perfect. Uh, and again, it's Mark Miller. I, I think my tag is musically Mark on LinkedIn, I believe. But if you just search Mark Miller and LabelCoin, uh, you'll find me. Right at the top. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. This has been really cool. I appreciate your time. This has been awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm Thank excited. you, Mason. Yeah, this is so it's fun. fun. It's good to know you. I'm cheering y'all on. This is cool stuff. We're actually doing a uh, next week here in Nashville, a local um, code review for smart contracts that Derek Brown's going to walk through some wacky smart contracts and go through the code. So there's going to be probably 20, 25 you know, anyone interested, but they're like literally going to bring lab. It's way over my head, but they're going to bring laptops and actually work through some code and smart contracts. So it's cool. Sounds this, incredible. Yeah, it's cool. We, yeah. This will be the second one we done. We're going to do them every month, but um, it's a neat thing that's kind of growing here in Nashville. So I'm, we're rooting you on, man. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mason. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Cool. We'll see you. You too. Bye.